As world market leaders, Pangea Securities Limited is an investment banking firm that engages in local and global investment banking, securities, investment management and indeed many other services. Well, for their efforts and of course their immense success, they have recently won Best Brokerage House in Zambia. And I'm delighted to say that today Pangea's CEO, Cesar Siwale, has joined me to talk about the company and indeed the industry. A very good day to you, Cesar. Thanks very much. I mean, look, let's, let's take a very broad look at the, in, the investment landscape in Zambia. You focus on four core services. So can you take me through those services? Tell me what they are and how they've contributed to the investment industry in your country. Okay. No, thanks very much, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, our business focuses on four areas, as you've rightly stated. Uh, we're a brokerage and trading house in Zambia. Um, we, we were involved in the brokerage services from the onset of the capital markets in Zambia in 1993-94. In fact, the founder of our business actually created the blueprint for the capital markets in Zambia itself, and subsequent to that created the capital market. We've been at the forefront of, uh, of bringing international portfolio managers into Zambia, uh, helping institutional capital uh, invest through the capital market in Zambia, and we've seen that grow from a trading volumes of $10,000 a day to a significantly large number over the last 20, 20 years. Um, the second line of business that we have is the investment banking itself or the financial advisory. And that's broken down really into three categories, uh, debt capital markets, equity capital markets, and M&A. Uh, again, when I joined the business uh, in Zambia, we were raising $100,000, $500,000 as an IPO. Uh, at the moment, we're working on a $380 million uh, offering in Zambia. Uh, we've been at the forefront in um, introducing new products into the market. We've done the first rights issues, for example, uh, preference shares. Some of the standard products that the rest of the world had seen decades earlier, we were at the forefront in bringing those into the Zambian market. The third aspect is we've also invested some of our capital back into Zambia, supporting entrepreneurs that are uh, looking for the right capital structure, uh, helping them with, uh, with governance, uh, uh, going through any uh, red tape in setting up a, a business, getting licensed with the Zambia Development Agency, for example, and placing some of our own capital on those businesses. Uh, in some cases, we have foregone fees or income, and because we believed in that particular uh, new sector that was being created in Zambia, for example, when the second shopping mall was done, there was no financing because it was something that didn't exist. So we structured that, were creative in the capital that we raised for the client, and we also took equity in the, in the, in the, in the, in the business. And the, the last aspect is really working across the board with both government, private sector, and navigating through a changing landscape in terms of how uh, you raise capital, you deploy capital, uh, communicating with the international community. For example, I'm in London now on, on that basis, attending a conference, and just how do you, how do you connect the, the, the two? Interestingly, in that answer, you said that you're doing things which perhaps a lot of banks take for granted. They do them every single day. That tells me that perhaps you're, you're catching up or maybe you've caught up with them. Um, I, th I think it's a journey in itself. Uh, I, I, we've never looked at this as a destination to match where Europe or any other part of the world is. Uh, as I stated, when I joined the, the, the firm, uh, a $500,000 transaction was a big transaction in the market. Today we're working on $380 million. It's a drop in the bucket compared to the sort of transaction you see in other parts of the world. But it's a significant stride that has been made in the Zambian market. That capital of that nature uh, is ready to be deployed in the market. So it's more the journey that we're excited about. The products have become a lot more sophisticated than a vanilla rights issue product. We have found that we've had to do hybrids. We have, we have created depository receipts in the Zambian market so that we can attract assets that have got interest in Zambia but listed in Canada, for example, the mining companies that look to, risk to list in Zambia. We did that through a product we created called the Zambia Depository Receipt. Uh, it was the first of its kind in the Zambian market. Vice versa, there were certain businesses that uh, had grown beyond the depth of the local market. So we took a Zambian business and listed it on the, on the, 
on the on the aim here in um, in, in in London. So the for me, it's the journey that's been exciting as opposed to targeting a specific destination. Mm, but you, clearly you're doing something right because you, you're attracting outside investors. They're coming in and joining you on that journey, which leads quite nicely to my next question, which is really about the current economic climate in Zambia. How would you describe it and how do you think it's reflected in the work that you do? That, that is a really uh, great question. Um, the journey for the Zambian economy has been one that's been an interesting one. We've gone from a command economy from the early 70s up to 1991 to one that was fully liberalized in the 1990s uh, and where we saw in the 2000s this transformation and blossoming of entrepreneurs in the Zambian market. Um, in, the last, in the last few years, I think where the challenges have been is in some aspects the capital markets or the financial markets haven't evolved fast enough to provide the entrepreneurs the right type of capital that they, that they needed. Uh, we saw 2008, uh, the rest of the world have the subprime challenges. To a large extent, Africa was missed with that, largely because um, uh, natural resources were still at very price silver at, at very high levels. Uh, 2015, that was a very different story. And we saw droughts, we saw commodity prices uh, drop. And as we say in our office, the Kool-Aid finished. Uh, I think there's a new wave that's coming through where you're getting restructuring coming into place. Businesses are looking not just for commercial bank debt, but of turn to formal financing. Government recognizes they need to, to, to reform. Uh, from our perspective, we think Zambia is now on the up. Uh, Expected GDP growth for this year is in excess of 5%. The sweet spot, really the target for the government, we believe should be 7 8%. And there are measures in place that hopefully take the economy to, 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 to those stages. International capitals continue to be attracted to, it, to, to the Zambian market. As I've mentioned, we're on a $380 million transaction. Uh, away from that, the various other transactions across all sectors that we are working on to raise capital. A lot of it is restructurings. Uh, or expansion into the, into the, into the region. Yeah, There's some exciting times ahead. And as you said, you do specialise in four areas. So how do you ensure that that expertise reaches the right clients and gives them the most relevant and effective support against this incredible backdrop of activity that's going on? I think the, the, the various pockets of capital that are there that have an interest uh, in markets like Zambia and Africa one of the private equity firms uh, who have raised uh, probably the largest levels of, of uh, capital from the LPs that uh, our part of the world has seen. That capital is looking for, for, for homes. Uh, you've got the DFIs, which are the developmental um, um, agencies. Uh, they are looking for homes to place that capital as well. And then another interesting group that tends to be overlooked is also the domestic savings. Uh, despite the challenges of 2015, uh, we saw that uh, pension fund contributions did not drop. And with a medium age of only 17 in a market like Zambia, you find that the pension houses are net recipients. So relative to the size of the economy, you have in excess of $60 million on a monthly basis that's looking for homes to be, to be deployed in. Uh, I think people like ourselves have to continue to being creative, disruptive, and bringing new asset classes where that capital can be deployed. Okay, and you're very well positioned, of course, to do this. Yes, we are. And in what ways have you successfully integrated the values and principles of sustainable development into the framework of your business? So overall, the business has always been very entrepreneurial. Uh, we have not been intimidated by being the first ones out of the starting blocks. We also recognize by the way the market was structured that... Um, Typically, a client that's looking to raise financing they would have already gone to the commercial banks. So we're not a commercial bank debt type of operations, but it's that alternative form of capital that we identify. Uh, by virtue of the journey that our business has, has gone through, we have the ability to raise money, whether that's domestically in Zambia, uh, within the Sadak region, here in Europe, or, or the United States. And I think the, the, the elements that have been key to, our, to, to, to the success of the business has been transparency with our clients, building long-term relationships. Uh, we also recognize typically capital coming out of 
uh, Europe or North America is probably a lot more skeptical when it's coming into Africa. So independently, we've registered with the London Stock Exchange here so that this supervision and how we conduct ourselves, um, uh, the operation of the business tends just to be very transparent with, uh, with, with clients. We take the long journey. We do not do the shortcuts. Uh, we go through regular onboardings with the bigger banks here, like Bamo and JP Morgan and others. Mm. And, and this is fascinating as well because, yes, compared to the likes of JP Morgan, you're very, very small, but it seems that you can teach them so much. A lot of the things which you're doing, the relationships that you have with your customers, something which they would envy. It's, it's actually been an interesting journey when you watch from where we started and where we are now, uh, where we have transactions that we will bid uh, against some of the bigger players. And uh, yes, they've got an army of very sophisticated and very clever people. But on the ground, as you know, a lot of these transactions will be relationship driven, where the bottlenecks are, how do you unlock those. The client typically doesn't want a fancy glossy document. It's how do you get, uh, how do you get the transaction across the line. And the team that we have as well that they're the uniqueness of our market because our industry itself is relatively new in the Zambian market and so it's an army of very young people but with just a very different perspective on life and how they do business and a lot of them have gone to schools here in London in the United States and so there's less the intimidation to yeah. their counterpart. They've got the best of both worlds, really, haven't Absolutely. they? And they, that makes them very agile. Absolutely. I mean, look, in the introduction, I, I just, just state that you've been awarded best brokerage house in Zambia. What does it take to get that? And what does that accolade mean to you and the bank? What message does it send out to the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a recognition that we, as, as we have said internally, it's a recognition that we were not expecting. It wasn't something that we put in a bid for. And so to be recognized by a publication as a European was, uh, was, a, bit of a, was a bit of a shocker for us. Um, but from our perspective and some of our directors, it's an affirmation of the, the values that we've had in the business, the transparency, trustworthy, uh, and then on the other side as well, being prepared to be the blueprinter, do the unknown and take on the market that you can, it's, it's a rights issue, you can do a rights issue in Zambia, you follow the methodologies that have been used everywhere else in the world, but then you t tweak it and you, you Zambianize it, as we say. And uh, uh, over the years, that has worked very, very well for, for us. So hopefully some of that rationale when the decisions were being made by, by the publication, those were some of the commentary our clients provided. Okay, so you and I are in this studio, or it could be another studio, in five years' time. When we're talking about Pangea, what sort of a business are we going to be talking about? Where is it going to be? So... From our perspective, is the journey has got to be inclusive, and it can't be a team of 20, 25 in Zambia that are doing bigger transactions than the current ones that we're working on, but you're leaving everybody else behind. And so we have always had an ideology that we, 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 we take the rest of the community with us. So typically we will do internships, for example, with uh, young people that are interested in our business. And that goes from middle school all the way up to university students. Obviously the, the, the extent of the involvement varies. Uh, we speak at universities. We engage the uh, more disadvantaged communities on the ground. Uh, this year we're launching um, a warehouse receipt program in a modified manner, in a Zambianized manner where we will be getting um, capital directly to the small-scale farmers uh, by taking their grain as collateral, as opposed to them tra selling it to the traders and getting a lower return for that grain because they're desperate for a need or they don't have storage and the rain's about to come and so on and so forth. So there's some DFIs that we're working on with that, and it's, it's a, an initiative that we're very excited about. Um, another initiative, since you said five years down the line, that we're very excited about. We're building this up slowly, uh, but when we are ready, we'll push the button on it. Hopefully it's within the five-year period, and that's building a center of excellence, as we've called it. We have invested in FMCG businesses in the past. We have seen how that sector has evolved. We've invested in movie theaters, where we have seen 
we have had to teach people how you tear movie tickets and uh, put on 3D glasses and so on and so forth, things that did not exist in the Zambian market at the time. And take that and have a center where they can be educated, uh, just on customer service. Or oh, we've got such talented young people who are athletic, whether it's tennis, whether it's soccer. My 13-year-old daughter is such a great soccer player. She's going to a camp here in Spain for the summer period because it's just something that she wants to do. So why not build those sort of facilities within Zambia? They are there, but it's just have to, to raise the standard. We've got over 20 years of case studies of transactions we've worked on in Zambia. So why not a showcase, an IPO of Zambia breweries as opposed to showing, showcasing the IPO of Facebook? The brewery is a lot more sentimental and closer to the, to the, to the Zambian citizen. So that's definitely a space that we want, to, we want to, to, to lead on. It sounds like a pretty exciting agenda to me. Caesar, congratulations and thank you so much for taking us through the work of Pangea Securities and good luck in the future. Thank you. Thanks thank very you. much.